Hi, so the Hydrosynth has many cool tricks up its sleeve. One of them being the ability to trigger its envelopes with uh, different trigger sources. So today I want to explore that a little bit, uh, show you how that works and maybe build a cool patch on the way. So let's get right to it. We've got the five envelopes right here. To assign a trigger source to an envelope, you just pick your envelope, then you move down to the third menu page, and there you get the trigger source menu, where you have four different trigger sources available, uh, plus a tap trigger. The available trick sources are the note on message, which is what it is set to by default, um, which means whenever I hit a pad, the envelope triggers um, or when there's an incoming MIDI note on message. Then there's the five LFOs, the ribbon controller, which I don't have here, uh, the sustain pedal on message, and the two mod ins, and that's it. In addition to the four trigger sources, there's the tap trigger, which is this button, which right now isn't doing anything because envelope one is not modulating anything. So if, for example, I increase the envelope one amount here for the filter one and then do the same thing. Let's go back to this page. I hit the tap trigger, maybe adjust the envelope a little bit. So I go to the first page of the envelope and make this a shorter envelope. So now if I trigger this, it's uh, opening up the filter. The available options are identical for the five envelopes with the one exception for envelope two. Trigger source one is always set to note on. You cannot turn this off and you cannot set this to anything else, but I guess that's fine because it's hardwired to the amp as you can see here um, by this uh, dotted line, which means um, the amp always gets triggered whenever we hit a pad. So uh, let me show you now how this can be useful. Let's use envelope uh, three for this. Maybe let's get rid of this. By the way, to reset a, a value to its uh, default value, just hold the init button and then you turn the knob and it snaps back to zero. Um, maybe to illustrate this, choose an envelope that's not assigned to anything yet. Uh, envelope three, for example, I also am gonna adjust this right off the bat because otherwise it's an all sustain envelope. Um, just make a decay on the envelope. And then I'm gonna assign, instead of the default note on to trigger source one, I'm gonna assign uh, LFO one. So now envelope three gets triggered each time LFO one completes a cycle. Right now it's not doing anything because envelope three is not assigned to anything. So let me change that. And for the sake of simplicity, I'll go with the filter here as well. So I'll hold the envelope three button and press filter one. And then I'm gonna increase this a bit. So this means Envelope three will now be affecting the cutoff of filter one. And as you can hear, uh, this repeats every time LFO one completes its cycle. Now, if I adjust the speed of LFO one, of course, this goes faster and slower. Now, you might be saying, um, how's this uh, useful? I could just use the LFO itself. Uh, of course you could. Um, for demonstration purposes, let me do this real quick so I can show you um, what the difference is. So I'll go to the mod matrix and turn this down for a second, back to zero. Um, and then I'm gonna use the LFO one directly to modulate the filter cutoff. And if I set the shape of LFO1 to like a ramp down shape, this will have a similar effect. Let's compare it one more time. I'm going to turn this up again. This is the envelope. And the advantage of the envelope is it's a lot more flexible than the LFO. The LFO only gives me this linear ramp down shape and the envelope can be really short or can be really long. Plus on the second page of the envelope menu, um, there's this neat feature which lets you adjust the curve of the attack, decay and release stage. 
um, which is also something that LFOs uh, won't let you do. Just to make sure I've got everything covered, um, let me show you there's a third option how you can get to similar results, um, which is by not using the trigger source, but by just looping an envelope. Uh, this option is available on the second page of the envelopes. The last uh, menu point here is envelope loop, um, which is set to off right now. If I set this to on, I can choose how many times it should loop. And if I go all the way uh, clockwise, it goes to infinity. So now the envelope three just starts over once it's completed um, one uh, cycle. Now here I still have the same kind of flexibility as before, the difference being adjusting the attack, decay or release stage of the envelope is affecting the length of the loop. Um, now of course we can combine this with uh, a trigger source, for example an LFO trigger source, so if I set this back to LFO1, um, maybe go to something snappier again here so can we can better hear what's happening. You can hear how it is looping and every time LFO repeats there's also a trigger from the envelope. I'm going to turn the envelope loop off again because it's not what this is supposed to be about and I'll go back to the trigger sources. Now like I said there's four trigger sources that I can assign to each of the envelopes. So I could, in addition to LFO1, assign LFO2 as a trigger source for envelope 3. So now we've got two different LFOs triggering the same envelope, which can lead to interesting rhythms. I'm going to change the speed here a bit. For now, I'm just going to use the noise so we get more of a percussive sound. Maybe I'm, I'll make this a bit shorter. Now, this seems to be a good moment to talk about the trick sync setting in the LFO menu real quick. Right now it's set to poly, which means each pad I press triggers its own uh, LFO. So if they are arpeggiated, the following uh, triggers that the LFOs are sending to the envelopes are also going to be arpeggiated. If they are set to single, this is not the case. The LFOs get triggered once when I hit the first pad and then afterwards they stay um, in sync with each other or there's only one LFO. I'm not sure how this works technically. If it's set to off, the LFOs never get triggered at all. They just are free running. Now we can get really crazy with this, maybe modulate the, the speed of, the, of one of the LFOs. I'm gonna use LFO 5 for this. Hold LFO5 and then press LFO1 and then it's already set to rate. So if I increase this, LFO5 is going to uh, change the speed of LFO1. And then maybe I'm going to use LFO4 to modulate some of the envelope parameters of the envelope 3, maybe attack. I'll set LFO4 to a sample and hold for this so we get just some random values or maybe okay yeah that's kind of cool too so it's increasing all the time i could maybe do uh, the same thing for the decay also maybe go negative here 
That's kind of cool. Let's see what it sounds like if I bring in oscillator one again. So we get a chord. Now, with the attack and the decay longer, what's happening is the envelope is finishing its uh, envelope curve before it gets re-triggered. So even though there might be a trigger from the really fast LFO2, sometimes it's not happening. Um, so I'll dial this down a bit, maybe the decay and attack modulation. Uh, if you're more into traditional rhythms, you can always BPM sync the LFOs, of course. So I'm going to do this here. I'm going to set this to a dotted eighth. And this guy I will leave at a quarter note. I'm going to increase the tempo a little bit. By the way, if you want to dial in the tempo and not tap the tempo, for this you have to go into the arpeggiator. Um, menu, so hold shift and uh, then the on or edit button here, and now I can increase this. Uh, a neat thing here also is the possibility to adjust the face. Now, unfortunately, this is not available as a uh, mod destination for the LFOs. You only get uh, rate and level, which would be really cool to make stuff go in and out of phase. Uh, I'll set this to something more normal again. Uh, now let's see what happens if I increase the envelope modulations again here. Cool. Uh, now, of course, right now I'm only modulating the filter with one envelope with uh, two uh, trigger sources, but of course I can send envelopes to other stuff than just the filter. I'm going to use envelope for now, also making this a short decay envelope, and I'm going to assign it trig. Well, I'm going to use trigger source one and assign it LFO two as well. Then I'm going to assign a destination to envelope 4. Let's say I'm going to try what the mutant does here. I think by default it's set to FM, which I'm just going to try, see what it sounds like. I'm going to set the source for the FM to a sine wave. And then I'll go back to the math matrix and I'll choose the dry wet as the modulation destination. So this is the envelope affecting the dry-wet of the FM modulation and this is the filter modulation. Now LFO4, I'm going to sync this guy as well because it's doing some weird stuff now because it gets triggered by the pads and it's not in sync. I'm going to turn the trick sync off here. Turn the BPM sync on. And set it maybe also to a bar. Adjusting envelope four. Let's see what happens if I set uh, this uh, mutant one to something different than uh, FM. Sing. This is kind of nice. I'm also going to modulate the decay of this envelope for a bit. So I'm going to use LFO4 for this uh, decay modulation of envelope 4. 
which frees up LFO5. So I'm going to use LFO5 to trigger yet another envelope. I'm going to use envelope 1, which is the filter envelope by default. And I'll set the speed of LFO5 to 16th nodes. So we get like a constant pulse here. Envelope 1. Yeah, this is already set to something short. That's cool. And I'm going to pick as a trigger source the LFO5 here. And for this to affect the filter, all I have to do is increase the envelope 1 amount in the filter 1 menu. Make it shorter. I have to turn this to off as well. So you can see you can get some nice rhythmic action with those envelopes triggered by the LFOs. If I set this to reset. Adjust the curve here. At the same time, I can always use the LFOs themselves. Uh, let's see, maybe this guy ramping up to uh, modulate stuff. So maybe I'm going to give this to the reverb uh, dry wet. Let's see what that sounds like. Kind of cool. Maybe even more, or make the reverb longer. I'm gonna shift the pads down one octave. What I'm going to do next is, so I have better control over all this uh, movement. I'm just going to try to assign all of it to one macro knob. So I'm going to have a look in the mod matrix what I have to assign. Uh, so this is envelope 4. Modulation is in slot 5. And then envelope 3 modulation is in slot 1. And I think that's it. Gonna go macro one, add it, then assign mod matrix depth one to this and send it to something like yeah, 80. Why not? I'm, I might have to adjust this later in here. I'm also gonna pick the mod matrix and I'm gonna pick depth 5 into a similar thing. Now right now all the modulation is already happening because uh, I'm going to exit here. The default values of these things are w whatever I have it set to here. So I'm going to set this to 0 and this as well. And then I forgot to add the filter, the envelope one filter modulation. So I'm going to go assign the, this to filter one envelope amount. Also going to increase this. Uh, and then in the filter menu itself, I'm going to decrease it. So now, macro one knob. brings in all the this uh, movement. So this is how those uh, envelope triggers work. Of course, uh, there's the other um, trigger sources that I didn't use here. I only use the LFOs just because they're in the box here and it's easy uh, to show what it does. 
Uh, there's tons of uh, mod destinations. Maybe let's do the last one, just see what happens. I'm going to uh, pick the pre-effect, maybe. Ooh, the phaser was kind of cool. Ooh, this is sweet. Try resonance. Let's add some delay to this. Yeah, very nice. You can see there's... Uh, millions of options and i could go on for hours but i think i'll leave it at that i think um this uh, maybe gave you uh, some ideas of what you can do with the uh, envelope triggers um, on the hydrosynth i think it's a really neat feature um, and i love it so i hope you found this useful interesting or entertaining and in any case i would like to thank you a lot for watching